Hi, welcome to Real Magic Review. My name is Steve Faulkner and this is Blackpool 2020. So yesterday was day one, the proper full day. The first bit was obviously the evening of the um, competition and yesterday was full on. It was... The thing about Blackpool is it's kind of relentless and I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that is there's literally you can go from one thing to the other and lots of things overlap. And for the main things that overlap, they kind of put two shows on. So for the Lance Burton show, there was two of them. And then for the Richard Wiseman show in the evening, there was two of them. So you could see both, but loads of stuff. I, I kind of started the day kind of going, right, I'm going to see a bit of everything. And then by, I don't know, like two o'clock in the afternoon, I was just broken. I was, try- I was trying to run through everything. So basically, this is going to be a kind of what I saw. And I did see most things, I think. And also I'll talk about some of the products and stuff from the dealer's hall, which because people wanted to know the highs and lows of that. I'm in the dealer's hall and there's nobody in here. There's like workers in here. I don't think I'm going to be in here, but it's, it, I kind of found a way, which is, which is really cool. Because I've spent the last hour trying to find somewhere to shoot and started filming and it was too noisy. And uh, mu- they play music everywhere in Blackpool. Like everywhere I've been that you wouldn't, like shopping set, everything has got music and usually Shania Twain for some reason, but there you go. Um, so the first bit of the day yesterday was a Sam Fitton lecture. Uh, lecture. So Sam Fitton did a, a thing on becoming a wedding magician and hints and tips on becoming a med- wedding magician. And I kind of went up to, I've been doing weddings for a long time and obviously I knew it was going to be good. I know Sam's a good speaker and he's, he's, He's an actor and he does a lot of that sort of stuff. So I knew it was going to be a good quality talk, but I didn't know how good he was going to be. He's a really entertaining lecturer. He's a good storyteller. And storytelling, if, if I could say anything about the, the lectures that I see that I come away with the most, are people that tell stories, anecdotes, but interesting ones, you know, about stuff that goes wrong. So Sam talked a lot about nightmares that he's had performing at weddings. He had footage of nightmares he's had with flash paper <laughs> performing weddings. And it, he had everybody kind of listening to every, every bit, even the people that maybe weren't going to be doing weddings. It was, a, it was a really good talk. It's that thing of, you know, when I was getting into weddings, that would have been gold. And he even talked candidly about how much he asked for, you know, how, uh, his fees and all that, which I think is really important. You know, people don't talk about fees, but why not? You know, it's kind of like, it's important that we all kind of know the average fee for a magician, the high-end fee, because then we can place ourselves in that. So I thought that was really, really interesting. He had the best line ever um, to say to people, which I won't do here because it's kind of his, but to, when you're trying to sell the idea of a wedding to, to somebody and you're pitching and maybe your price is higher than some other people, he had a thing to say to them, which I just thought, God, and then he said, you can have that, you can take it. I won't do it on here, but it was just brilliant. But the point is, if you see Sam and you see he's doing a talk on being a wedding magician and you maybe already do weddings, I would definitely go and see it because I, I really took stuff away from that. Lynette Walsh did... Uh, She's from Fabric Manipulations, I think, who make the egg, egg bags. She did a talk on the history of magic, and I kind of went into that. I didn't see all of it, not because I didn't want to watch it, because I was trying to get sort of a big chunk of everything. Uh, but that was interesting, and she's someone that seems to really know her stuff. So straight away, you've got two com- completely different things, and that's what's starting to happen at conventions, isn't it? It isn't just like, here's some tricks to teach. It, they're, they're opening up to talks and almost keynotes, TED Talk type things which I know the session did a lot of, but Blackpool is now doing a lot of, and obviously Magic Live is doing, doing a lot of, so, so it's really good to see that and to have that kind of mix. And also the, ven- the venues here are, because, I don't know, I used to come here and every venue you couldn't get into, it was heaving, and there seems to be space that, I think because there's so much on, there seems to be space to sort of sit down, mostly, other than Matt King, which I didn't get into lecture-wise, uh, but that's fine. I mean, it was just heaving. You, you just couldn't get in if you were like on time rather than half an hour early. Um, but Matt King did the same lecture as he did in the session uh, year, year, last year, not this one just gone. So I did talk about that, so I look back. Um, but it, obviously he's a great lecturer, but I didn't get to it, which is a shame. And I did see Ryan Schultz's, some of Ryan Schultz's lecture, and he's got these, um, what I liked about that is it goes into the concepts of a lot of self-working, not self-working necessarily, but self-ish working uh, stuff, which is really important. For me, I, I find it really hard to learn that stuff in a lecture situation, you know, because it's kind of processes, you know, those tricks, are, and there's nothing wrong with processing card tricks. I think card tricks, I think they can work really well but I need to learn that with a book. I can't have, so I was saying to someone last night, you know when someone tries to teach you a card trick in a bar at a convention and they're talking you through it, 
within 10 seconds I'm gone. I can't, it just doesn't go in that way. A very professional lecturer, very confident, and, uh, and really good. But Kyle Littleton, I, I saw Kyle in the session, again, last year, the one, not the one just gone, the one before that. Um, and he did like, he only did like a 10 minute bit or something, and it felt very rushed or a 20 minute bit. And, and it was good. It was good when I saw him at the session, but it did feel like he squeezed, he had a couple of tricks out, he did, he did no sense very quickly. This time, he had more time, and he, he, he's done a lot of stand-up, and in a year I'd seen, maybe it was just because it was quick before, but he just looked so relaxed on stage, he looked a lot more relaxed, and he opened with this four-card opener, which I, I really liked. I thought he was just going to do no sense in his, his stuff that he sells, but he did, um, it was just really funny, he says, name any card, and, and they name a card, and he's got four cards, and he goes, oh, it's not that one, and then they, they just turn into three cards in front of your eyes, you know, at this playing out as well, not down here. And then he's moving the three cards and then they turn into two and they turn into one. And you're just kind of going where they're going. And I'm thinking this is heavy sleight of hand here. This is kind of one of those kind of palm, lateral palm things. Uh, and then all of a sudden they go from one to like a whole deck of cards again. And what I liked about it is it plays here. Like I said, it plays out. And I'm looking at it thinking this is loads of slides. And then when he went through it, no sleight of hand at all. And it's, it's got some really nice methods in it. So, I, uh, and I talked to him afterwards and I said, where would you get that? Because I want to mention it, because I think it's really good. And I, I want to look at it. And is it on your lecture? It's only on his lecture notes, apparently, which is on his, his Instagram. So I look for Kyle Littleton's Instagram um, and you'll be able to get that. But, but I really write, write it. And again, no affiliation. I just like it when I see stuff and go, I, I can imagine myself doing that. And then he went into his no sense and, and a lot of his other tricks, which again, really, really good stuff. And I, I thought he was a really strong lecturer, actually. And, and, uh, and someone that I think has an eye on stuff that maybe is geeky, some of it like no sense, but also works commercially as well. Uh, I, I watched uh, Henry Evans. That was interesting. Uh, Henry Evans did a thing. <laughs> I, you know, when you've got bits of gaps in your magic knowledge, I have got gaps, you know, it doesn't matter how much you, you have gaps and you, there's things you don't know that a lot of people haven't known. He did a thing with a silk, Matt, and I was like, <laughs> I, I, I don't know how he's doing it. It literally vanished from this hand and ended up in this hand. And I was like, oh. I said to my friend, oh, that's, that looks amazing. And he's got this thing when he puts his hand in a bag. In a, in a clear bag and it gets tied up and he's clearly got nothing in there and it vanishes and ends up in that hand in the bag. And then when I found out what it was, it was this little gimmick that I remember seeing. And again, I'm not going to go into it in magic shops years ago. I'm thinking, and it's just, I was like, I've got to get one. I'm going to get one today. It was just brilliant. So he's someone that it's going to get noisy in here now, just because the dealers are coming in. Um, but again, I love it when you walk into someone and go, yeah, not for me. And then go look to your friend and go, oh, hang on. <laughs> So, Henry, again, I knew it was going to be good, but that was, that was a real eye-opener. So I'm going to get that little gimmick today. And the close-up show, so there's a close-up magic show, um, which was fine. You know, it was sort of stuff I'd seen people in the deep, you know, when these shows that people do this, this stuff, it's going to get really noisy now, I'm sorry. Um, but what I did like was Michael Amar was on and he did his cups and balls. And I haven't seen Michael Amar do the cups and balls for a very long time. And I, my, my friend John, we said we forgot how good that routine is. You know, I've done the cups for 15 years, and it's quite brash and shouty, and, but when you see my I do it, it's just really lovely and, and graceful and wonderful. And, and again, I'm just totally a joy to watch the man work. I've always loved my Amar. He did his um, coins and silk thing as well, which again, I haven't seen that probably in about 10 years, and just really beautiful. And, and he's just got that relaxed demeanor, which we'll talk about in a minute when we talk about the Lance Burton show. So the Lance Burton show, that was a big one, wasn't it? We, we, so I have always been one of those people that I've never got to Vegas. I just cannot get to the States at the moment. It's money, it's kids, it's all that sort of stuff. So whenever like, someone like Matt King comes, who I saw at the session, he's doing a show, Lance Burton, that's kind of as close as I'm going to get. Uh, and I am not, I'm not a person that likes, I'm not an illusion person. I don't hate them or anything. They just really don't do it for me. It, and, and I know a lot of magicians absolutely love them. Um, no, even as a kid, I didn't really get into them. So I was a bit like, what's this going to be like? A couple of things I'll say about it. It was really nice to see Lance Burton. What I noticed at the, straight from the beginning was just to see someone that is that relaxed and confident on stage and just sort of chilled out. He's got that kind of, that lovely drawl, that accent. And, he, you know, he did a trick at the beginning, Vanishing Birdcage, which is, 
just really lovely to see. And then he got, you know, instead of getting a kid out of the audience, like a lot of us do, he got seven, I think I counted 17 kids out of the audience to all, <laughs> but he's like, I want them between this age and these kids are coming up that were clearly very big. And they all put their hand on the birdcage and the birdcage vanished. And what was lovely is that you saw their, their reactions was brilliant. You, these kids are just kind of, you can't fake that. It, it was so lovely. So that was brilliant. Uh, the, the, the performers he had on were great. Um, I'm just going to, with your Michael Godot, who, who had this kind of, again, as, as an ex-juggler, well, not an ex-juggler, as a juggler, someone who did a street show for 20 years. It was all that kind of stuff, but just really clipped, really polished, um, really funny. Right, Keith West and the Illusioneers, again, not my kind of thing, but do you know what I noticed? Uh, Keith West did this thing of, a floating box thing, and I know the illu people at the Illusions will hate me for not knowing the name of it, but I've seen that a lot. He's standing there in the box, coming up in front of him, and there's a woman in the box, her head keeps coming out of the box. And what it looked like, it looked like the box was floating. Now, I've seen that quite a lot where it looks like there's someone holding the box, but you just can't see him holding it, or it looks like, do you know what I mean, or a mechanic, but you can't see the mechanics. But this actually looked like it was floating, which I actually found really magical. And I don't usually go for that sort of stuff. Uh, Fielding West did the Dove thing. Something weird's happening with doves now, isn't it? With certain doves. He's doing some stuff, and you could tell people, a lot more people than usual, a little bit like, and I'm not making a judgment on that for this video, but I, there was moments of discomfort, and he played with that discomfort, and he was very aware of it, and again, very professional. But I did feel that there was something in that, that there's a, something's changing in our audiences when, when we see people with doves that... I don't know, it's like when I saw Dan Sperry, there was part of me, I really like it in a way, magically, but there's part of me that's going, ah, oh, you know, I, I don't know how I feel about that. And, and the, the, the feeling of the whole show was, it, I loved seeing Lance Burton. I loved, the show was good. I thought it was a solid show. It was, you know, when you've got those just great jokes, great lines, people that have worked that stuff in for so many years. They've all been doing it 30 odd plus years. Um, and I like that. It did some of it come across maybe a little bit kind of, I don't know, that with me it's like another illusion where a similar thing happens. Maybe did some of it come across a tiny bit dated? Talking to other people, there was a real split. Some people like it's brilliant. A lot of people were like, yeah, it felt a bit kind of pedestrian in moments. But I, I really liked it. I thought it was a solid show. It was illusions and I enjoyed myself, which is, you know, that, that is a, a big thing for me. I had a nice time. It was a long show. It wasn't short. It was over an hour and a half. And, and I came out of it and I wasn't bored at all, which, which was good. Um, and it's Lance Burton, you know. Uh, my highlight of the day, I think, was Richard Wiseman's seance show. Now, I've seen Richard, Richard Wiseman speak, and mostly online, but, I, but and, and I've, I've seen him live a couple of times. And I really like the way he speaks. I wasn't exp didn't know what this was going to be. I thought it was going to be a really spooky show. And it wasn't. He came, came on. It was very funny. And then it was really funny, and then I just laughed a lot out loud, like belly laughs. He, it was a really nice use of PowerPoint, of, of imagery, you know, with humour. The seance bit was brilliant. I'm not going to give anything away because he'll probably do it again, and you might see it at another convention. But all I'll see is I, I just thought it was a really funny. It was late at night, I was exhausted, I was knackered, and I had a really, really nice time. It was a really good way to finish the evening. And then I was a very good boy. I didn't go to the Ruskin. I didn't do a stupid late one because, do you know what? I'm 46 and I got up this morning at six having fallen asleep at midnight, right? That's quite a lot of sleep for Blackpool. That's like saying I've had 20 hours of sleep. If you have like that amount of sleep, like six hours sleep in Blackpool, six hours, that's, that's a lot. Most people have about 20 minutes, but it, it was, that sort of seance thing really energised me and then I kind of didn't do the social thing. But I'm going to talk, a lot of people want to know about the, the dealers. Um, I got a few things here yesterday. Um, what I, what I, there's a couple of things I was going to mention. Kristen Grace, and I know it sounds like I'm affiliated with him, but I'm genuinely not. I get nothing from Vanish Inks. Because a lot of people here go, no, I do stuff from Vanish Inks. I do stuff independently. Vanish Inks share it because they're very lovely. And then other people are starting to share it. But it is independent. I really... You know, it's really important that you know that when I talk about products and stuff. Um, but no affiliation whatsoever. The Christian Grace's um, his, uh, prediction effect is, is brilliant. I will put the name of it. What's it called again? Oh, my God. Something what? That's awful. But um, it's early and I'm tired. 
it's Christian Growth Review, I'll put the name of it down there. Really, really important, really good to keep your eye on. It's really strong, he does it really well, and it floored everybody again. Like he, I saw him there last year doing level one, everybody's going, wow, and he's doing this, and everybody's going, wow. It's brilliant, it's a really clean prediction, uh, and I really like it. These, uh, I quite liked the Real Workers guys, uh, Joel and Andy from Real Workers. I haven't really looked at their stuff properly. Uh, Joel did his Lincoln elastic, elast, elastic bands, easy for me to say, uh, which I'd seen a bit online, but it was nice to see that in real life. Very convincing, very cool, and, and everybody's uh, enjoying that. There was this for, force. Andy did this, for those of you that you know, aren't slight heavy, he's got this thing called a divergent deck, which is um, a, a kind of looks like you're doing a riffle force, but you don't do a riffle force. You just open a deck at that point. You can force a couple of cards. Um, it's really clean, it looks great, and for those of you that, again, aren't into heavy sleight of hand, it, it's, it's worth looking at. Divergent deck, again, no affiliation. Um, what I really enjoy, because I've got kids, is Alakazam have uh, a thing called unorthodox, unorthodox, unorthodox. Don't know what it's called, but it's that. It's unorthodox, but with uno. Um, by Antonio Martinez, it's, I really like it. It's, uh, <laughs> It's, um, I don't know why I'm laughing, something about Uno. I was thinking it's because I play it with my kids. But you basically get a deck of Uno cards out and you spread it and um, you, there's one normal card in an Uno deck. And you, you say, oh, I've got this Uno deck. And you could, uh, Pete and I had a really, really nice presentation with it. Um, and you're looking through and then one of the cards um, is a normal playing card and it's the whatever they've said. So it's an invisible deck with Uno cards, which I, which I really, really like. I, I was like, oh yeah. Um, I can just see so many possibilities with it. There's something nice about getting a deck of Uno cards out, especially with people who've got kids and there being one playing card in it. I don't know why I like it, I just really do. Um, so that was good. And it was lovely to see Harry Robson. I think it's his last Blackpool, I think. And it, he, um, he's got this thing, that the medal, which is uh, similar to the Al Quran thing where somebody names, uh, names any card and you've got it on the middle of the medal. And he's, he's just funny, isn't he, Harry? You know, <laughs> he just got this medal on doing this thing. And I just really, I really liked seeing him do that. And it made me think there were a lot of possibilities, a lot of kind of ironic possibilities with this medal saying, world's best mind reader. I don't know, it just tickled me. Uh, so that was that. Um, I will be talking about more things I've seen. I mean, as the usual, I, I, I can just watch Lysander's floating table for about three and a half hours and it's lovely. Uh, and Roddy McGee's got this really nice ring flight. I can't remember what it's called, but you know, type in Roddy, Roddy McGee, Ring Fly. Again, really, really good thinking. Uh, and just the books this year, the books. I mean, I'm going to be reviewing a lot of the books from the Vanishing Ink Stand because they've just got this library now of just stunning books. And there are a few coming out. Uh, so keep, keep an eye out for that. I'm going to try not to buy loads of books because I've got so many to read. I've got the like Steve Forte ones on the way, the Helder Gamares one. Um, and as I win repertoire and I, I'm almost, I'm looking around going, oh, I want that. And I thought, when am I going to get a chance to read it? And you're sort of, you're walking around seeing these people in the dealer's hall just going, oh, I can't spend any more money, but they can't help it. It's like an illness. Everybody's sort of guilt ridden in the bar afterwards with their stuff going, when am I going to actually use it? It was a good, really good day yesterday. This is a brilliant magic convention. We all know it's brilliant. It's the catching up with people and what, what I was really, really touched by is the amount of people that came up to me saying, I really enjoy the show, keep doing it, keep going with it. With a kind of understanding, I think, people had that thing in their eyes of understanding how much hard work I'm putting into it. Um, so thank you. If you did come up to me and I was a bit flustered and, and I sort of felt like I was sort of filming everything, can you say thanks? I do really, really, really appreciate it. I don't take that lightly. Um, the support has been amazing. Um, do feedback to this, you know. If you, I, I know it's a bit noisy, I know it's a bit rushed, um, and there are certain things I won't be able to see. Um, but I'll try and see as much as possible and, and sort of report back. If you've got any questions about any products that you've sort of heard about, do let me know and I'll go and check it out and see what I can do. Uh, but thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, please share, and, uh, and I'll report back tomorrow morning. Cheers.